And now it's my turn. It is. How do you do? We are about to unfold the story of Ghost of Frankenstein. My son, would you destroy that which I, your father, dedicated his life to creating? What if it had another brain? Whose brain? Your brain. Bollock! What good is a brain without eyes to see? I warned you that you might regret this action. We've, we've warned you. You've been warned. Welcome back to Frankenstein Minute, the podcast that dissects the Universal Frankenstein film series minute by minute. I'm Bill Evenson. And I'm Tom Lang. You join us for minute five of The Ghost of Frankenstein. All new TV. thrills. All new thrills, it says right there on the yep. poster. Yep. That's like the subtitle. I like that as a title, though. All new thrills. Like, that's why this movie was made. Like, yeah. you like Frankenstein? Here it is, but it's all, all new. Don't, in case you think maybe we're, we're just going to reissue We just it put The again. Ghost of on yeah. the first one. Yeah. Yeah. Nope. Nope. New thrills. And All this is a new. very thrilling minute. Yes, this is a good Why minute. am I talking like this? I don't know. Are you channeling Jerry Seinfeld or something? Why, why are all these minutes so thrilling? I told you he was alive. Yeah. That, that's fine. But then the next guy... <laughs> that's that's, then, that's fine. The next guy says, all the more reason to blow up the castle. Yes. I don't think it's a really good idea to taunt and antagonize a guy who's throwing 300-pound stones uh, at you. I guess. Do you think that's a good well, strategy? Well, okay. So, like, do you ever play uh, video games? Do you ever play, no, like, Risk? Never. Do you ever play... I played Risk once, and it felt like it was a punishment. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Do you ever think about war in any way? Uh, Do you ever think about war in a way other than that it's bad? No. Like it's um, usually it's, not. There are there are strategies on both sides. So I think they've got the, they've got him. You know what I mean? They shouldn't just give up because he's pushing concrete off. No, but I you know standing around the door's not even locked. You know, yeah. there's a way around this. I'm sure standing around but, though underneath where he's chucking these things down. Well, what it, here's what I see down there. I see a bunch of hipsters with boxes of records. I'm not kidding. <laughs> yeah. It looks like the guy brought his rec- box does, of records. Yeah. And I. I'll never not see that. It doesn't look like dynamite to me. It doesn't look like... To me, Touch of Evil has the box of dynamite, and it looks like something out of Looney Tunes, right? (laughs) So I assume that's what it is. That's That's what what it looks like. And this looks more like a box of records. Um, So I'm assuming that during the Great Castle demolition, business little small businesses are springing up, and this guy's trying to sell records. (laughs) Okay. That's what I'm saying. You got a guy out front hawking T-shirts. Yeah, there you go. Yep. My parents (laughs) destroyed (laughs) Castle Frankenstein. And all I got is this lousy t shirt. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. It's a great celebration for the town of Frankenstein, which we may not will, see again. Oh, I don't think we do. This will bring prosperity back. That's they'll be the bread. They'll have more bread than they'll know what to do with. Now you know. Now you <laughs> the, the bread is be pouring in. The bread trucks are on their way. <laughs> already. Viseria is shipping them out. That's right. I hear they need I bread. They need bread. <laughs> Get it this out. Is, they won't shut up about bread. <laughs> well, Die, you fiend, you swine. Yeah. yeah that's what the subtitle that's says. That's what it says, but I'm not sure. That's what he actually says. Okay, because I think it probably is, but I it's, it's, it's hard, not entirely it's clear. It's not clear, yeah. Yeah, I think it's probably right, but I've listened to it a couple times, and I'm like, I don't, I can't You're make anything really else sure. out of it. Yeah. What I love about it is, well, I wrote, that villager's got sass. I, it depends <laughs> on when I write these notes. <laughs> <laughs> what that kid's got the it? kid's got moxie. <laughs> He's got moxie. <laughs> um, but I really like the idea of die. So just yelling die at somebody is kind of cool. It's yeah, very it's, comic booky, right? Like it's, these it's, films, it's very Marvel yeah. comics. I don't know DC as well, so I, I just think of it as a Marvel thing. Just the things that people say in the comics, you read mm-hmm. them, and then if you think in your head, you think no one would. No say one would ever this. actually say that. Like who would say die? You fiend! You swine! I it's know, an like odd kids thing. will say that. Sure, but would you say, I hope you fucking die? Or, yeah. you, know, you know what I mean? You yeah. wouldn't just say, die, die you fiend, you swine. swine. Can you imagine if a kid said that? You'd be like, I like that, that kid's <laughs> well, got boxy. <laughs> <laughs> I like that kid. I like that kid. I would like that kid. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He shoves another couple of blocks over, and I'm kind of on his side on this. <laughs> okay. A little bit. Well, we know him. Yeah. We love him. We love him. He's Igor. cute. Yeah, he's cute. And he's there's cutie. nobody. Just record salesmen downstairs. <laughs> they don't. They're, what are we? What kind of shouting, crazy madness? Shouting. Uh, what What were the What were the big hits in 1942? <laughs> what you I got the Sinatra he, collection? Glenn Miller. Glenn uh, Miller. Big band stuff. I'm sure. Some old 78s. Some yeah. Robert Johnson 78s. <laughs> yeah. You got a, and he and he grabs them, moves them out of the way when. Well, it's like I don't want away. your records ruined from, by these Merlons. Get concrete in my hailing down upon you. Yeah, my Merlons. <laughs> <laughs> 
pelted with Merlot. <laughs> this, this very Which is obvious, a word I just learned like two well, days ago. Exactly. This very obvious, this scene, that's very obvious what's happening has now become Merlons and records. Mer- Merlons are popping. <laughs> It's the oh. soundtrack to Ghost of Frankenstein, which I got to say, we, we haven't mentioned. Well, well we're Uh-oh, bound to talk about it in a few it's weeks. It's fine here. It, it's it works. Fu- okay. It works here. I wouldn't say it's fine here. It's actually really good here. Yeah, okay. It's a really good soundtrack. Uh, it's not my favorite For soundtrack. For the most part, yeah. There are some, There's some issues moments. that I'm just guessing we're on the same page yes, on this. As we're we're both trying to say, uh, that, but it is very good. Yeah. yeah. And, and, and in, the, in here, I think, or maybe in the other one, they talk about that Salter was very happy with it yeah. and i think yeah i would be well, too and he it's had good work. he had the time to do a proper score unlike sun where the yeah. story you know they were composing it as they were shooting it yeah and taking shifts one would compose the other would sleep one would orchestrate the other would sleep yeah salter and skinner and then they'd go to the editor and say we got this great song can he, he, you just, just throw, throw it in throw it in pulling the chain for a minute throw or something in. throw anything we got this good silent movie music that's not what's happening here this is no, this is really good rousing music. It's rousing. Uh, the MFGA crowd plants its dynamite. Mm. Make Frankenstein great <laughs> again. <laughs> <laughs> or make, 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 oh, I got it. I'm sorry. Right. Make Frankenstein Goldstadt again. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> oh, shit. Okay. <laughs> <They're>... <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're, you're hearing it in your head, you're not sure it's going to work. No, that no, worked. That was beautiful. All right. <laughs> okay, so. <laughs> Um, they uh, yeah start playing the dynamite at the base. Igor hightails it off the roof. Yes, and he realizes, oh shit, they're serious. Well, he limps off the roof. Well, he's I mean, got he a, a, a very dramatic limp. Yeah, uh, they blow up the door to Castle Dracula, mm. and that's where you see the door really clearly in that shot when it explodes. It is the door from. I, I agree. It looks it looks it, really like it, that. It is yeah. exactly the door. Um, it's the one from Spanish Dracula because it says El Door. <laughs> 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 oh, oh, yeah, yeah, I okay. can't think. The Spanish word for door, so that's we'll gotta, go with El Door. That's got to that's that's got to get cut. That's go. Oh, no, <laughs> that one's stand. That's my favorite part okay. of the whole. All right. Series. And they, they blow up. Uh, but the, no, here's the thing about that. I find I wrote here the first shot after the explosion is disappointing because that door seemed like it was barely on there. Anyway. Yeah, I know. It sort of and tips it doesn't over. even fall over. It falls part way. Yeah, over. it tips over and it's, it's like, like yeah. it's like they're all cheering because some smoke went <laughs> yeah. and a door moved a bit. Door it really wasn't that impressive. Over then, like a couple but the feet. thing about that is, then the next shot is spectacular. Super. Yes. Yeah, the miniatures are really good. Yes, because it's the left hand turret or whatever you. Call all that okay goes off and yeah there's like stuff inside it like yeah it's not just a hollow right shell it's got some some i don't know what the word i'm looking for i don't know either but weight it's got some weight some to weight it to it feels it. like because when we talk about cgi effect and i've actually had to think about this because i probably used it as an example on our podcast that last thor film the mm-hmm. first five minutes just looked so fucking fake i was yeah. like why are we doing this but i i've now i want kind of want to go back and look at it again because i think maybe i'm missing the point and it's supposed to look kind of comic book yeah which is a comic book movie <laughs> but yeah, still crazy. those effects can be really annoying because you're like yeah. well c- if you guys worked on this for three more weeks you could make it look like it had some weight some yeah it's a good effect if you can if you can make something look especially with a miniature you're trying to make it look like something Bigger gigantic than yeah and uh, i don't know if they succeed exactly here but it's certainly well, better than some shit effects i've seen they like over crank it a little bit so it slows it down do you think that gives it a little bit of weight interesting um so when you say a bit like when it's when something's really over crank you can tell or really under crank you yeah. can tell so it's just a just little slightly bit slightly just to give it a little so and i'm doing a crank motion with it, my hand do you think there is a manual no or do they just change the speed no they just the change thing? the speed on okay. the camera right now they're all electric yeah i suppose um yeah i mean th- that went out with the silent era i suppose because you had to have maintain a specific frame rate to match the sound okay if you varied it by hand cranking it it would throw the soundtrack off that makes sense what was the point of all this? Uh, the model looks great. Model looks great. Cleo we did both a fantastic. Love the Cleo Baker did a fantastic. Cleo, job. as I was going to say. Kudos to Cleo. Kudos to Cleo. Inside, then. What's the name of that Cleo film? Cleo Five. Patra. Oh, that one. That's probably what. <laughs> what? I don't know. <laughs> 
Inside, Igor descends the staircase that looks like it's redressed from Tower of London. I don't, I'm not familiar. It looks like it, and I don't think they would build this great big set for... It's amazing, it's like three, three seconds, seconds of film. And then they blow it up. Yeah. Well, then they, what they don't do is blow it up, interestingly. They, they do a they, great job, and the, the, another great minute for the effects team. So there's a big bunch of smoke that yeah. he overtakes the... the completely the, the, completely overtakes the screen. Yeah. And then it, it fades out, and you can see we're still following him yeah. down that stair. It's really beautiful, and then... Yeah. And then he and we see him come down and uh, and it's clever how they've done it because that staircase you know we watch these minutes in in, in great uh, <laughs> ridiculous detail. ridiculous uh, yeah uh, scrutiny yeah but what you really have is that staircase doesn't that doesn't break nothing happens there it happens no. but then there's a bunch of smoke and a little right. bit of sparks I think yeah. and then when he comes down to the bottom there's a bunch of carnage bunch of, at the bottom yeah. because they just laid a bunch of shit on the floor right but it works it works really sure. well it lo- sure. that's how you show a castle falling, falling apart down, and yeah. not kill Not, Bela Lugosi yeah uh, there is a shout coming up I think that is a that uh, kills Bela Lugosi no I think it's uh, that I think it's a double but this is definitely oh, okay. him here oh yeah well I was yeah it appears that he takes when it, the worst possible route but too <laughs> like if he just go around there's nothing mm-hmm. but no, he's climbing, he's climbing, over, climbing over but it's I don't visually know. visually it looks great though oh, it does yeah. yeah well I was gonna say also I don't know where what it looks like from the other side maybe if he went around it's even worse we don't have a frame around. We don't have a frame around. So, yeah, it looks you great. You know, we've never been in this set before, so... I also wrote here, did Igor always have a limp? I thought that was one of the few ailments he didn't have. I don't think it was as pronounced. Yeah. Here it's kind of exaggerated, and it goes away. It kind of comes and goes it? throughout okay. the film. Like the hump. I, I, sometimes it looks like he has one. Here I don't think it looks like he has a hump. It's Classic like, uh, film. It's, you know, it's Mel Brooks, it's, it writes itself. There you go. Idiots plant more dynamite around. Igor makes his way down to the depths of the sulfur pit. Then uh, from the, on the outside, the idiots, there's the one chubby guy. Yeah. Who's I was just gonna fucking say, loving it. Sorry. Yeah, a couple of MFGA dopes tiptoe away from the dynamite. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, he does. He kind of he kinda is like, oh, yeah, I got to yeah, get yeah, out of here. There's a scene in the... Have you ever seen the movie Ocean's Eleven? Uh, yeah. There's a... It's Which one of those great... We're talking, heist. I assume, about the remake. Yeah, I don't, yeah. I don't care about the other one. See, yeah, I, don't I only care mean the, the remake. remake. Two-thirds of the beginning of the film is assembling the crew. Mm-hmm. And then when he goes to get the, the black guy... He's under arrest, and mm-hmm. Brad Pitt comes up and pretends to be this other cop that's going to take him possession of this yeah. perp. But he's also got an explosion, some sort of explosive rigged, and they're walking away, and then they start to do this kind of run, this kind of like you know, silly, tip, like, oh, you got to get out of here, run. It's, it's played for laughs there, and it yeah. works really effectively. But here, it's just a guy. <laughs> it's just a fat guy <laughs> tiptoeing out. <laughs> Tiptoeing away from the, and he's got like a cravat. Yeah, um, <laughs> he's, like a, he's like having a, a blast. Like a, a sailor cap. Like what a, kind a, of fun things are there to do in Frankenstein? <laughs> Fucking cravat day yeah, and yeah, blow, up, blow the up the castle day. day. This guy's this is the best well, this day is, of this his is life. The one time. <laughs> It doesn't happen very often, happen but the one time often. where they overlap. It's yeah. hard to plan. I can't believe this happened on Cravat Day. This is perfect. <laughs> okay, then you got two guys lighting a wick. And I Googled this because is there another term for it? If you've got a long string that goes fuse? to your dynamite. Oh, fuse. That's the word I couldn't think of. <laughs> Fuck's sake! Did you watch no Bugs Bunny cartoons? Oh my God! So this guy lights the fuse, and then the and then that silly guy runs Run. past the camera. And yeah. if you watch, and it's very, it's almost the very end of this minute. So I don't know, people at home, four fifty-five or something, because <laughs> it's almost at the end of this minute. It looks like it goes out. The fuse? Yeah, oh, I, I think didn't the fuse that. goes out because there's a big flame on it because yeah. presumably they wanted something visual. Sure, sure. And then it's, you look and it's gone. Yeah, I think it goes out. But who cares? It doesn't yeah, matter. It doesn't they matter. lit it. You saw him light it. You saw a fat guy running. I can't run away. I'm, I'm sold. <laughs> Who doesn't want to see a fat guy running? <laughs> I'm sold. Hey. <laughs> I tried to find Jesus Christ, the glory find, of fucking son of, or a ghost of Frankenstein. I, I tried to find who that guy was in that. Oh, is that right? Oh, zero no luck. Kidding. Zero well, luck. Well, it's Wilbur. I think it's Wilbur. It's Wilbur, Wilbur uh, Gray. Back in his old days. Yeah. yeah make when any he was sense. taller. And Wouldn't work. Older. Any more questions, wise ass? Uh, that sound of the what is the is there a sound the sound of the bell there's no bell there's in this no movie. bell in this movie what are we gonna do we gotta find something gotta find some gimmick well do you not listen to the podcast because I put music in and then I, I shout yeah you do got any questions I that can stop doing Tom, that if it's annoying. but I can't really talk over that and also refer to it like it's not like something no I, I, re- I find a point to break it and yeah you put do. it in then I'm, I'm working with whatever I can do go to for help it you. thank you means. <laughs> it's, time it's time once for, again. <laughs> time once again for got any more questions, wise ass.
Brought to you by Crest. Brought to you by... Oh, brought to you by... This, pa- the, brought, it's brought to you this week by Patreon. Patreon. If you're familiar with patreon.com slash Frankenstein Minute, that's what it's actually brought to you by. Patreon is not supporting us <laughs> no, in any way, not actually, in any way. it turns out. If you're not a Patreon, we would hope that you would either be inspired to become a Patreon or don't listen to this segment. <laughs> yeah, skip this ahead. This is not till, for you. Skip ahead till this segment's over. Or if you are a Patreon, but you're, you've, you come under some hard times, then go ahead and listen. Yeah. I, you notice I didn't mention that they stopped paying. You're just under, <laughs> just hard, under times. hard times. So you can still listen. Okay. This week's comment is on episode... Oh, I'm sorry. I got confused. I put two on one page just to fuck with... I I will never... I honestly <laughs> thought never I get, committed to being more organized. It'll be like minute, <laughs> minute 78 of Abbott and Costello. And You'll finally, finally have my finally, shit together? Yeah. yeah, but by then I'll be senile. <laughs> not that I'm not senile. Uh, Minute 100 Extravaganza Part 2, okay. confusingly called Episode 101, because I love it. Well, I didn't know what, what was this, 108? Well, you did call it. That's right. It was you. Yeah. No, it's brilliant. I love it. Well, I, and I can't beat IMDb it. almost rejected. I'd be happy if every episode was off by one yeah. or two. Like, you know? IMDb almost rejected it because the warning is like, it seems unlikely that there would be 101 episodes in a, a season. And I had to accept Doesn't it? it? Yeah, it does. <laughs> it really seemed <laughs> They've painful. got a point. Uh, anyways. Okay. Uh, Don Motley okay. responds, Walpurgis night. Is it Valpurgis? Val- Valpurgis or something like that. Is May Eve. The night of April 30th. That's cool. I never knew. So we were off by a month when we... By about to, a month. Yeah. yeah. But we also I guess I, I guess I knew that and, and had forgotten. Okay. Because they... Re- Take re- that, Don Motley. No, 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 no. He's, he, thank you for correcting us. Yeah, no, uh, absolutely. He, uh, this is exactly the kind of thing. Yep. Because they refer to it in Dracula. Mm-hmm. You know, I've seen it various places. Is it the, Walpurgisnacht? Yeah. Okay. And so I just looked it up. Uh, when I, I like how you just kid. say yeah, even though I just <laughs> all over the place. <laughs> I'm not going to spit you know, right on your you know, hand. We've dragged this out all. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it's uh, it's right at the beginning. Uh, Dwight Fry is uh, is in his brilliant dual role in Frankenstein. He's in the first role of Renfield, where mm-hmm. he's completely skeptical of all this bullshit. Uh, all, yeah, and he's really it's really a sort of a perfect and fun thing. Like, yeah. Well, I just want to go to the castle. I, gotta, I don't. I, it's a legal thing. I need yeah. him to sign a couple of pieces of paper. Uh, uh, well, what's the worst that the, could happen? Demons. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. I'm sorry. Right. It's, it's Von Pergusnock. That doesn't. It's okay. not, you guys. You sound like frightened children. <laughs> Well, I've got this other one. If it's that bad, go blow up the castle. There you go. (laughs) See, it's all right there in the first scene. Everything is okay now. And then try and put your brain in. You guys know where the brain is, (laughs) right? Anyway. All right. And then I have another one, so I'll just... Can we do a second one? Sure. All right, second one. This is in response to one of our bonus episodes. Oh. So if you don't subscribe to Patreon, uh, not only have, should you have en- stopped listening, uh, but this won't make, <laughs> this any, won't make sense. any sense. This won't make any sense. Chuck from Winnipeg <laughs> says, Hey, Chuck. Terry Jones and very tragic for such an amazing director with Terry Gilliam. Mm-hmm. I seem to remember a book from the library growing up that had the entire script of Holy Grail, which ruined me for life. Always good to listen to folks of the same corrupted <laughs> sense of humor. Yes, uh, the pre-video that book. Uh, I've never owned, uh, or maybe oh, even really? read the entire book. Oh, really? But it's got the it's got deleted scenes, right? It's, it's got, got deleted scenes. There's a whole big section like in that the middle. Movie, is it like half the movie? Maybe is they it? talk like it's like half the no, movie. No, it's cut just out. a big scene in the middle. That and how much out. of that ends up in the series? Uh, well, that's that's the first draft. So oh, okay, so it's not even that stuff. No, it's not the ant. No, there's like this King Brian who oh, I don't uh, even know this. Yeah, no, maybe you don't I've never because. Seen it. You don't because they never used Where, it. They, where's your Monty Python section? Right Do you there, have this? Right there. Yeah, my, my cord's not long enough to reach, which is good because it's an audio podcast yeah. and nobody needs to listen to me read. No, I found it you know, back in the days of B. Dalton. B. Dalton. Yeah, and I actually had to get a second one years later because I just you know mauled the thing over years of... Uh, You're just supposed to read the pages. You don't need to... Oh, you won't get no, more out it of was, it if you Well, see, book. I would be on like Channel 2 during Pledge Drive, so I would follow would along. It? Yeah. Huh. And then I would took I took a pencil and wrote where it had changed from what was oh, in the script. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. But, and, and, of course, you didn't tape it. This was... It, people will know. It was know, pre-VCR, it was just yeah. Just airing. So you'd sit down. You'd be like, yeah. this movie's going to be on it. 
eight o'clock. Yeah. Everybody shut the fuck up. I did. And give me a pencil. I, I did make a on um, cassette an audio ah, of it. Sure, that would work. And, I, and what year the, are we talking? All, oh, seventy five or seventy eight. Seventy eight, seventy nine. Yeah. Yeah. The Life of Brian era. Okay. Well, the eras don't match here in the U S. in the seventies quite. It's not like we were watching Python when it was on in the U K. No, no. It took no. a long time to get over here. So by the time it got here, it kind of came in a bunch of a bunch of shit happened all at once. Yeah. The records, the mm. show, the books, the movies. Yeah. They were all coming out. You can actually fucking... thank Dean Martin for that. All right. Because he had a, a summer replacement. This, I, could, I, I, could, I, I, I don't know if I even want... Oh, I was going to say, I don't even know if I want to know why. I just like oh, Dean right. Martin, and I love the idea okay. that he wanted that to happen. You, should I not... No, you better wreck it. Okay. He had a summer replacement show, because he had his normal show. I think it was like Which Friday. normal show? His Didn't variety Dean show? Martin, yeah. Not like the a, roast show. What was it? The roast was kind of part of that. Oh, okay. And it spun off to become just that. Yeah. But uh, during the summer, he had this Dean Martin's World of Entertainment, where he found, or not he, I'm sure he had nothing to do with this other than lending his name to it, but they found all this stuff from around the world, and some of it was Python. First time I ever saw Monty Python was on there. It was Conrad Poos. We talked about this years ago. Conrad yeah. Poos and his dancing teeth. So in order to get it onto that show, they had to be transferred from PAL to NTSC. And they just paid to have the whole series done that way. Yeah. And the Pythons originally fought against it. Like, well, no, they're showing it out of context, blah, blah, blah. And Nancy Lewis, their U.S. representative, said, no, this is, they're going to do it for free. They're going to pay us to have these transferred. Now we can get it on the air here. Right. And so they're like, yeah, okay, that's, that makes sense. It's like nowadays when uh, um, when uh, the Monkees series is put out on Blu-ray and it's mm-hmm. ex- 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 exorbitant. What's the word I'm looking for? It's really expensive. Expensive. expensive and if you want it you got to pay this amount of money partly yeah. because it costs a lot of money to make to, to, it and uh, when we're done we're going to sell it for cheaper to somebody else yep. we're going to use those transfers to mm-hmm. put them on netflix or whoever wants them and that's how the system works and right. there's nothing wrong that's with exactly it. how it works yep. yeah there you go although in that case they sued the and i believe one are you talking about the abc yeah i thought World, they sued World them for of that. Entertainment. oh that's a, that's a different it thing. was the last season the season four okay and so they were going to do them over two nights because they have this show it was a 90 minute show on like Friday nights at 11.30 10.30 Central there was a production of Frankenstein that Dan Curtis put together over two nights on there because they weren't part of the package that went to PBS oh okay so they were, they were going to do, okay, it's 90 minutes, so each show is a half hour. We can do three shows, but we have to trim some things for broadcast commercials, make commercials it make, and broadcast make it work. standards. Yeah. What they did instead, without telling anybody, was re-edited it into this jumbled mess where it made no... I have not seen it. I don't know. It'd be but, interesting to see, wouldn't it? But the Pythons... Did it ever air? Yeah, it aired, hmm. and the Pythons got wind of this, and they're That's like, what, they what sued the for? fuck is this? And they sued and won. That's how they became the owners of the Flying Circus. Yeah, tapes is because of that lawsuit. Yeah, there's some the the, the Monty Python story is it touches on a lot of different things. And there's one, uh, what's the book called? There's Monty, Monty Python, Python the versus case of, the case the against. the case against. There it's you go. A great book. It was and written it, it just by, covers all of this these topics. Yeah, it's written by Michael Palin's childhood friend Robert Hewitt. Oh, I didn't know that. That's yeah. interesting. and uh, yeah, it's a great book. I wish he would have done. I wish he would write another one that updates because it was like 79, 80 yeah. when that came out. It must it was. Post most Life of Brian, so it must have been 81, 82, something like that. Because it talks about. I wonder about, if there are a lot of updates. There probably are. Oh, I'm sure there's, you know, nothing quite as dramatic as, as the stuff yeah. in there because they were still a functioning right. team at the time. But yes, you're right. Tragic end to, to Terry Jones. Very Absolutely. much, yeah. I don't know. I said this, uh, I think, in the Dino episode. You know, there's a, there's a lot, most usually not a great end. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I, I, I find it, the more, older I get, I guess, the more I, I sort of become this. It's really disappointing uh, how people die. And then when they <laughs> die, I tend to think of that when I think of that person. Terry Jones, I don't have that. So when I watch Monty Python, I don't think, oh, look how sad look to how see sad Terry was, when Terry he was alive he was and good. was wonderful yeah. and he was yeah. at his peak. Yeah. Yeah. But some people I do. Some people I look at them like uh, uh, David Carradine. <laughs> well, <laughs> never mind. Okay. I'm not going to do that. I'm too, not going to do that today. Too soon. Too soon. <laughs>
Well, there's a, I, I watch the Red Letter Media I've talked about on YouTube, and they're, one of the things they'll do is watch bad movies and then talk about them. Sure. And one of them, they turn it on, and in the first scene, David Carradine, they, they, they <laughs> clearly don't see this coming. <laughs> the very first scene, David Carradine uh, walks into a room, and there's a noose, and he oh. puts his head in it. <laughs> <laughs> Some of the jokes do you, you can know just what sort of... the movie was? <laughs> I can find out. I mean, David Carradine made probably 1,100 shitty movies, yeah. so you have to... He made one fantastic well, okay, oh, two. Kidding me? Um, You're talking to a Tarantino fan no, over here. Be I'm careful. I'm not. I'm talking about a Paul Bartel fan because he made Death. No, Race. I mean I'm the fan. I'm yes. Saying. Oh, Death, Death Race, Race 2000. 2000. Oh, yeah. 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 I haven't seen that in a long time. Oh, I, I think so I it was so, that movie's amazing. no, that movie's juvenile. What's great? It's juvenile. Yeah, but, it's, but it celebrates that. Yes. You know? But it's also I don't know I don't know if I'd want to revisit it's, it for that reason. It's juvenile. Is it like yes. fart jokes or is it no, as no, good no, as no, a, no, 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 not at all. It's juvenile con. Concept, but Paul Bartel was a really smart man, and he elevates what could have been. You know, crap now I think into... about it. I do have visual memories of it. I remember the like. This is. Don't tell me if I'm wrong, because I don't want to know. Right. That when when the death race is coming by the hospital, and they wheel out the people in the wheelchairs to see them go by, <laughs> and then there's just the way I picture it is there's a hedge. <laughs> and the car goes by in the wheelchairs, wheelchairs. and the people just go flying. <laughs> I'll, I'll leave you with that. All it's, right. It's not, I, see, not, I don't want to go back and watch it's it. It's not quite, but yeah, you're, you're close. <laughs> <laughs> is it more graphic than that? Because I, I can handle that. Yeah, no, I, no, just watch it. But the idea is the same. They well, push enjoy. a bunch of old people yeah. in wheelchairs out to watch. Fra- is, this, is it Frankenstein? Yeah, David Carradine in is, that scene. is Frankenstein. Yeah, so there's a... There's a, a and uh, you can see like... Connection to what Sylvester we're talking about. Stallone, Frankenstein. Sylvester Stallone in a good movie. Anything? All right, anything, that, that anything sound indicates we're done. <laughs> we're done. Okay. Oh fuck! Time's up. Mm-hmm.